Hello everyone, welcome to lecture 29 of the course Applied Seismology for Engineers. In earlier lectures, we have discussed started with earthquake occurrence, how to distinguish between active faults, inactive faults, how to quantify earthquake based loading in terms of seismic hazard. Later on, we discussed how this loading which is going to be generated because of seismic waves at the bedrock level will get modified by local soil in terms of ground response analysis, particularly related to numerical methods of assessing the local soil effect. Later on, we discussed about liquefaction assessment as well as about landslide occurrence. Later on, we have also discussed about the seismic microzonation practice, how one can quantify the hazard index values taking into account various geological, geotechnical, tectonic and other parameters of a particular region and its possible variation, which will help us in having an understanding about what are the locations within your study area, which can be considered as relatively lesser affected by earthquake and its induced effect and what are the areas which are more affected or more likely to be get affected by means of earthquake occurrence in a specific exposure time. This information can be used further in order to go for planning of the cities, site selection for important structures such as hospitals, schools, relief camps, which can be used as shelters in case there is an earthquake hitting a particular site or a particular region for which suitable microzonation maps are available. Okay. In later stage, we have discussed primarily in lecture 28, we have discussed that whenever earthquakes are hitting a particular infrastructure, there are case studies in which fatalities in terms of may be 10,000 people to as high as may be 1 lakh people, we have discussed in lecture 28, have lost their lives primarily because earthquake occurrence and the response of the infrastructure to those earthquake occurrence. In addition, we have also seen that a significant portion of fatalities are also reported in addition, uh, there will be economic losses also. In whenever we are talking about economic losses, these are in terms of maybe hundreds of millions to several billions of dollars. That is the amount of money at the same time one has to pump into in order to go for rehabilitation work, in order to supply medicine, essential items, even to supply food to affected area during a particular earthquake. So, we last class that means, lecture 28 we discussed about seismic vulnerability and risk studies. In earlier lecture, we discussed about uh, whenever earthquake based hazard is there which will be exposed or which will be uh, applied to a particular infrastructure depending upon the infrastructure capability, depending upon its intended use, sometimes the infrastructure may undergo partial damage, complete damage, collapse. So, that is going to be withstanding it, its withstanding capacity for earthquake induced loading condition. That will come under vulnerability definitely whenever we are going with risk assessment that means, what is the risk involved if a particular infrastructure undergoes, undergoes failure. So, whenever risk is coming into picture we have three components. The first one is related to vulnerability which will get input from seismic hazard analysis. So, you will have seismic hazard analysis, you will have vulnerability and the third part is exposure. Whenever we are talking about whether it is about the building, what is the hazard corresponding to what exposure period the hazard is given and in that particular exposure period, what are the buildings available, what are the design life of those buildings. So, collectively based on these three parameters one can assess the risk part. Uh, in lecture uh, 28, we also discussed that whenever we go for vulnerability studies, Primarily, we will be using two methods. One is empirical method, which is primarily based on rapid visual screening. That means, you will go around a particular site of interest or a particular building of interest for which you are interested to perform vulnerability studies. So, generally, a screener will be there who will go around the building. If possible, you can go inside. If you get inside, then you will get may maybe some more idea about the building classification, the building characteristics. Uh, later on, that can be clubbed with respect to the type of building and the associated score, which is given in the standard charts. So, in today's class also, 
we will be discussing about uh, how to assess the score bo be both the base score as well as the score modifier depending upon the type of building, depending upon the type of construction material, then depending upon number of stories, whether the building has some kind of regularity in, uh, irregularity in plan or in vertical dimensions and subs uh, subsequently many more details which will help in getting modifiers with respect to base score in order to come to a uh, uh, score that is rapid visual screening based score in order to get the vulnerability of a particular building. So, this we have discussed uh, this is just a uh, uh, brush up of whatever we have discussed in lecture 28. So, rapid visual screening this is empirical method to go for vulnerability studies. Here it is one of the most popular empirical method because firstly you can find out the vulnerability or the score of a building very quickly. So, it is kind of empirical method uh, to find out the vulnerability of a particular building. It is developed by forensic emergency management agency that is FEMA in the year 1998. The second edition of these guidelines primarily related to rapid visual screening was given in the year 2002. Subsequently, it was revised in the year 2015. It is a cost effective tool because you can you can get uh, the guidelines are very much uh, defined. So, you can just go around the building find out uh, specific to those guidelines what are the details which are available in the building and then go ahead with the development of the score base score as well as score modifier. It is based on visual screening of the building by means of sidewalk around the building which will take max maybe 15 to 20 minutes maximum 30 minutes. In case uh, an expert is there it is fine otherwise if expert is not there you can train people about specific details which one has to look into in order to go around and get the information about the building. And interior if it is accessible it is very good if it is not accessible we can avoid the interior and then go ahead with the information which can be accessed which can be seen from the outside of the building just roam around the building. Primarily uh, the objective here in rapid visual screening is to find out may be irregularities and in terms of what type of soil medium on which the building is constructed because we know based on earlier discussions that whenever ground motions uh, whenever building is located on hard rock medium whenever it is located on stiff soil whether it is located on soft soil in all the three cases the ground motion even the site is located at equal distance from your focus or epicenter the ground motion and all the three condition will be significantly different from each other. When the ground motion is significantly varying with respect to site characteristics definitely this will have a direct impact on defining the vulnerability of a particular building. So, that is also one information which in addition to irregularity one should look into. So, interior need not be accessed, but if it is available it can definitely give you confidence about what are the details you are looking for in terms of uh, uh, vulnerability study. So, the purpose of rapid visual screening it is a preliminary screening process based on which one can eliminate the need for detailed investigation for certain kind of structures and then you can emphasize more on may be more important structures or the structure which based on preliminary investigation such as rapid visual screening has been indicated vulnerable. So, you can go ahead with uh, uh, maybe more important structure or the structure which are defined or found as more vulnerable based on rapid visual screening and you can eliminate the structure which perhaps are not important as far as uh, the study is concerned or are found as non hazardous non vulnerable based on this particular part when as far as the earthquake occurrence is concerned. So, limitation here is because in this particular method you are trying to find out or assess the vulnerability of the building just by looking at specific details of the building. So, what happened many a times you are searching for some details of the building based on which the building is identified as vulnerable, but in actual the building is not vulnerable or many a times the building is actually vulnerable, but based on the scores basic score as well as the score modified after uh, the modifications based on different parameters you find out that the building is not vulnerable. 
So, actual building is vulnerable, but you are finding the building is not at all vulnerable based on the calculation. So, some buildings these are the limitation with respect to rapid visual screening. Some buildings which are found vulnerable based on the study may not be identified. So, that means there is limitation you are finding out the vulnerability based on some criteria, but actually that particular building is vulnerable or not that can vary from building to building and case to case. Similarly, there might be some buildings which are not vulnerable, but are identified as vulnerable primarily because that is how the guidelines are there, but mostly the objective here is to find out vulnerable building based on more specific details about the building which we will we'll come across further. The experience of the person which is screening as I mentioned not you do not require any expert, but many a time the screener can be trained for some time and then the person can go and start screening the buildings which are there in a particular region or specific building which you are looking for as far as the vulnerability of important structure are concerned uh, from seismic point of view. So, the experience of the structure uh, the person who is going to screen the building it is crucial as far as because uh, as far as the in situ investigation is concerned because based on these identifications based on these marks or understanding about the characteristics of the building finally, you will be getting the score and based on the score you will be finding out the vulnerability of a particular building. If you recall uh, lecture uh, 28 we had decided we have divided the building into two type one is masonry building other one is framed structures which are like more or less covering majority of the type of building nowadays. Then in each of those building types you are having grade 1 to grade 5. So, grade 1 starting with almost no damages and grade 5 is almost complete collapse for each kind of building. So, that is going to give us the kind of vulnerability each of these buildings are corresponding to whenever we are going with the base uh, score or score modifier we will take further details in order to arrive to the same parameter which is corresponding to the type of building you can assign whether it is uh, the, the building is highly uh, vulnerable or it is vulnerable or it is having low vulnerability corresponding to the given characteristics. Later on you also take into account whenever you go for risk assessment this vulnerability will be clubbed with respect to the spatial distribution of seismic hazard which is already in terms of certain exposure period primarily if you are going with probabilistic seismic hazard analysis. So, the procedure here as far as uh, modifier uh, the, the score as well as score modifier is concerned the, the procedure for rapid visual screening is as follows. Firstly, you go for pre field planning that means, whatever information one has to look into when you are going to field or to the site or a particular location or in a particular region when you are going and assessing the specific details of various buildings in a location you have to go with pre field planning. What you look into pre field planning you have once you have to define what type of project you are dealing with the screener has to be trained it need not be expert, but still people can be trained with respect to the type of details one has to look into while going around different different buildings mark the latitude longitude mark the address of those buildings mark the seismic zone in which the buildings are located because you are looking from seismic vulnerability point of view. Then you go with screener has to be trained then you can go ahead with the seismicity of the region because later on you, uh, you will be determining the seismic vulnerability that means, what is the vulnerability of the building keeping in mind the seismic aspect of a particular region. If you go ahead with uh, micro zonation uh, the if, if you go ahead with the seismic zonation map of country particularly for India the entire country has been divided into 4 zones starting with zone 2, 3, 4 and 5. So, higher is the seismic hazard of a particular zone that means, the chance is that your building is exposed to larger level of ground motion is high. So, that means, if the building is the building characteristics also suggest the building is quite vulnerable and over which the loading characteristics also suggest that the chances of earthquake induced loading is also going to be significantly higher definitely it is controlling collectively the risk of the building and its intended user against failure. 
So, seismicity has to be defined. Then next part will be soil type. As I mentioned many a times buildings are located on outcrop, buildings are located on weathered rock, buildings are located maybe on a stiff medium or there is some kind of utility which is also existing in case of soft medium. If you go with IS code, Indian standard code, again the building classification, uh, uh, the soil type classification is also given there. So, referring to that one can, if, if you are going for vulnerability studies for Indian subcontinent, one can refer to those site classifications or site type for uh, which are defined as per IS 1893-2016. So, you can go ahead with seismicity determination or seismic zone determination, you can go with soil type or the characteristics of the soil. So, it is like hard rock, stiff soil and soft soil, these are the three types of soil which are defined in Indian standard uh, uh, particular code IS 1893 2016. So, you can define that part, then you can start with field screening. Now, you know about where your site is located, you have trained the person, you know what is the seismic zone in which your building or your study area is located. In addition, you also know the type of building you are targeting to perform vulnerability study what is the site condition at which this particular building is located. Then you start with field screening that means, building type has to be determined what type of building you are located which you can find out based on the type of construction material which has been used for the building construction. In addition, you can refer to uh, the policy which are there in place to, to, to classify a particular building. Depending upon the uh, type of building, one can determine what is the base score and then score modifier which will help in understanding how the base modifier or the base score has to be modified taking into uh, characteristics, uh, maybe the irregularities, maybe the number of stories and many more things which we will discuss in uh, coming slide. So, firstly you will determine the base score and this will also give you depending upon the building type will also give you what are the factors one has to take into account in order to go for score modifier. So, score modifier means there was some base score which is corresponding to the type of building. Now, this base score has to be modified taken into different parameters into account which are the part of score modifier as given in your uh, maybe whenever you are going for uh, field investigation you will be having a uh, form which which I will show here. So, specific to that particular form what are the details asked you look for those details and apply the score modifier according to, to your uh, base score. So, overall score you determine. So, you are having a base score apply score modifier to that collectively you will get overall score or based on which you can say like based on rapid visual screening this is my overall score for a particular building or for n number of buildings separately. Photo has to be taken many a times irregularity which are present in the buildings may not be visible in, in terms of uh, the site map or the building plan, but if there are irregularities present maybe in terms of in situ condition of the building irregularity present because uh, in, in vertical direction which may not be visible in plan or there are irregularities which based on site investigation based on collecting information from the site you get to know which was not there in terms of its plan sectional elevation. So, that means, you can go ahead with taking more photographs getting additional detail related to the uh, score modifier. The layout has to be checked as well as sketched to find out again what are the irregularities in terms of plan, what are the irregularities in terms of vertical elevation. Post field trips that means, initially you decided what are the condition you will look into based on uh, the project you are looking for. Then you went for field investigation, look for score modifier, look for building type, collected some photos, also looked for the layout of the building in order to check whether whatever information about a particular building you have collected that information is also matching with the layout of the building. Then post field trips what you will do? You will summarize whatever work you have done in terms of entering the database for different kinds of buildings. So, there is specific forms related to that form you can actually note down the specific details which will be helpful in determining the 
score, base score as well as score modifier. Then final recommendation that means based on your base score, your modified score, now you are, be, you are having a score value based on this score value you can categorize or you can grade whether it is about machinery building, whether it is about frame structure, what is the vulnerability of that building, whether it is not vulnerable, whether, whether it is vulnerable, whether it is highly vulnerable. So, that you can you can uh, identify or you can establish that understanding about a particular building. So, data collection uh, for this explanation I have referred to uh, documents which are given on Ministry of Home Affairs web page referring to the forms generated by Sinha and Goyal 2004, which are again referring to FEMA 154 oblique ATC 21 based form. So, that was the basic guideline based on which one can perform vulnerability studies for a particular building, which has been referred in Ministry of Home Affairs, Government of India. So, this particular form can be also downloaded from that particular website. Now, here data collection form consists of particularly for the first one is seismicity. That means, whatever building, whatever study area you are located in uh, looking into, what is the seismic zone in which the particular study area is located. Accordingly, the form is to be taken. According to IS 1893 2002, subsequently in 2016 also, the seismic zonation map of country is given, of Indian subcontinent is given. So, in total the country has been divided into four zones, seismic zone 2, minimal seismic hazard and seismic zone 5 corresponding to highest seismic hazard and this is a map of the country. So, you can see here the regions which are ma marked here and what is the zone in which each of these regions are located. So, going uh, go ahead with the legends which are given on the right side corner, you can see different color codes are given. You can go ahead with green, red, blue, yellow color and corresponding if your study area is located somewhere over here. That means, you are talking about seismic zone 2. Similarly, if you go to the northeastern part somewhere over here, you are located into you are looking into seismic zone 5 as far as the seismic zonation of your study area is concerned, which is asked in seismicity condition. So, entire country is divided into different uh, seismic zones, wherever your building is located, wherever your study area is located for which one has to perform seismic vulnerability study, you can refer to this code and get the seismic zonation uh, uh, information for that particular uh, study area. Then building information, building is there study, the seismic zone is spreading over a larger area. So, whenever it comes to a specific building, because you have to note down the details and finally, submit the report corresponding to the vulnerability assessment. So, you go ahead with finding out the detailed information about the building, primarily the address. So, you have to find out where exactly the building is located. In addition, you can also give the latitude and longitude. So, latitude and longitude will help us in locating the building over the map and the address will help us in locating the building in actual field condition. Then ground motions, whenever we are going for vulnerability studies what is the ground motion which we are expecting the building will be exposed to. One can refer to seismic zonation maps and corresponding each of these zonation maps. Again in IS 1893-2016, average horizontal design coefficient is given. One can refer to those and subsequently one can determine what is the ground motion expected. Taking the natural period of the structure into account and corresponding to this, you can go ahead with the design response spectra again corresponding to the site condition you can pick up what will be the spectral acceleration, take into account the importance, take into account the response reduction factor and then you will be able to get what is the ground motion which is uh, you should take into account. If you are going with seismic hazard uh, based map for a particular building, then directly you can pick up the value of seismic hazard and then go ahead with. Uh, ground motion determination. Soil types as I mentioned because these are the ground motion primarily whenever we are going for seismic hazard analysis, uh, we, we determine or most of the study determine the seismic hazard values for site class A or B which is corresponding to very hard uh, 
raw condition. So, if your building is not located on that particular site condition, rather it is located on stiff soil or soft soil. So, that has to be noted also whenever we are going with building information, where actually the foundation of the building is located that you can look into and then report it as soil type which is mentioned that has also to be reported in the form. So, you have the building information, you are having the seismicity information, you are having ground motion information which the building is likely to be exposed to for which you will be interested to determine the vulnerability of a particular building. Then what code has been used in order to design this particular building? Different different codes are there which particular code has been referred to in order to define design the particular component if you are primarily talking about frame structure. So, what codal provisions have been followed that has also to be reported in the form. Then information about the architecture of the building that was also to be reported primarily into take uh, to take into account the irregularity whether it is in terms of plan whether it is in terms of elevation. So, that can be also taken into account. So, these are the information which are corresponding to building type which has to be taken into consideration as far as the data collection for vulnerability assessment of a particular building is concerned. So, we have information about the seismicity, we have information about the building and soil type. So, we have started uh, from zone, we have reached to the site, then building type, what is the type of the building you are targeting and corresponding to that building type, what is the basic score or base score. So, base score means the score of the building depending upon the type of the building, what type of building it is. Uh, corresponding to that type, you can establish or you can get a value, value of base score from the next slide. Take that into account and successfully you can modify that taking other characteristics into account which will also be shown in the next slide. So, uh, when we are talking about building type means which has been constructed similarly what are the uh, uh, guidelines which has been avoided while constructing a particular building, there might be some guidelines uh, uh, by the district administration which also has to be followed in addition to codal provisions whenever we are going for construction of a particular building. So, those can also be noted down in addition to the design code as well as architectural details. Also at the same time you should also uh, report if there are irregularities or there are no irregularities present in the building, primarily when we go for basic score that is solely depend upon what is the type of the building. So, that will not take into account any kind of irregularity if present in the building, it will only take into account what is the type of building type. So, building type and basic score that means, you go to you, you uh, based on uh, pre uh, field investigation you have decided what are the area to be uh, surveyed to find out the vulnerability. Then you narrow down to the study area you collected you, you went to the site and then referring to the building type as well as the basic score which is will be mentioned over here. You can assign to a particular building what is the type of construction has happened to a particular building. So, as per national policy of 2004. 10 building types are fixed for which the basic score was evaluated. That means, following the national policy of 2004, primarily 10 types of building can be found in field and corresponding to each of these types of building types, the basic score has been estimated or has been evaluated which one can take into account while going in field and finding a building. So, if I am going to a particular location and there are 10 buildings which I have to be surveying. So, uh, what I can do? I can refer to this particular new uh, uh, national policy of 2004 and assign basic score to each of those 10 buildings which I am supposed to uh, uh, survey. So, these are the types 10 types of building types starting with wooden structure. Now, here we can see again depending upon the type of building and seismic zone in which the building is located, you can get different values of basic score. If you are taking vulnerability into account, that means 
lower there is the basic score you can say the building may be relatively vulnerable more vulnerable so you go with wood if the building type is wooden you can go with basic score corresponding to 6 uh, basic score corresponding to seismic zone 2 will be 6 value similarly if you are going with seismic zone 3 building remains the wooden one your basic score will reduce to 4.4 if you are talking about seismic zone 4 and 5 your basic score again for the wooden building will be corresponding to 3.8. So, building remains the same, but depending upon where your building is located. If it is located in uh, seismic zone uh, 2, your basic score will be 6. If it is located in seismic zone 3, it will be 4.4. If it is located in seismic zone 4 and 5, the basic score will be equals to 3.8. Similarly, S1 so, there are number of terminology which are given over here after uh, wood. So, one can refer to this kind of chart which is given on the right hand side. So, L m that is the kind of frame and it is referred to the steel frame primarily related to uh, whenever frame is coming into picture which is given over here that means you are talking about steel frame wherever L m is coming that means you are talking about some light material which is given over here also. Similarly, M R F is there mostly you will find uh, uh, like moment resisting frame buildings. So, then you can go with M R F moment resisting frame. So, this is the uh, abbreviations given uh, these are the expanded form given for different abbreviations which are given over here. So, you can see you, you at the site you can have a wooden frame, you can have a steel frame, you can have a light metal uh, uh, building constructed you can have a framed structures, then you can in case shear walls are present then S w can be there. So, you can say C 1 C 2 and I n f is burnt bricks if are used as far as uh, the masonry infill is concerned. If there for masonry infill burnt will, uh, bricks are used then you can say I n f. So, corresponding to I n f the basic score will be 4.4 in seismic zone 2, in seismic zone 3 it will be 3.2 and seismic zone 4 and 5 it will be 2.6. Similarly, band plus R d which is given over here as band means seismic bands are provided at different different uh, levels in the building and then R d is uh, rigid diaphragms are also provided. So, that means you, uh, you need not only look for one specific detail in a particular building, but majority of the details which based on uh, uh, walking around the building we, you can get lot information primarily about what type of building it is and you can get more information primarily from uh, maybe getting more data about the building maybe plan also if it is available maybe uh, the design details if it is available for a building if you are talking about recent building then corresponding to the details which are there with us we can find out if shear walls provision are there in the building if there are seismic bands in the building, if there are di uh, diaphragm wall, rigid diaphragm wall or flexible diaphragm. So, those also can be referred to while determining the building type or more than building type other details. Then URM is there that means unreinforced burnt bricks are there for the construction. URM4 that means unreinforced machinery has been used for the construction. The, in case in addition to this you are having some more more than one type of detail which is matching with your building type you can refer to this and get correspondingly what should be your basic score. Uh, you cannot have combination of this so if you are finding there are shear walls available then you can go ahead with C 2 and depending upon where your building is located whether it is in seismic zone 2, 3 or 4, 5 collectively you can determine the value of base score. So, base score is primarily based on the building construction, how the construction has happened and what are the details primarily related to offering resistance to earthquake induced loading condition. So, if you see here shear wall that means shear walls are provided in order to avoid the kind of failure primarily because of earthquake loading condition. Similarly, diaphragm are provided or unreinforced burnt bricks are there or unreinforced masonry is there which has been the primarily source of building type. This itself is going to give you an understanding about what type of resistance building is going to offer during a particular earthquake loading condition 
in order to understand the vulnerability of that particular building. So, this is going to give you a basic score about building type. You went to a particular site, 10 buildings are there, look at each of these buildings and compare the type of construction material and construction practice which is given over here and come up with the basic score of a particular building. Then you can go ahead with further details, more specific details about the building which will be the part of score modifier. So, score modifier means now I have achieved based on the type of the building I have achieved a basic score that means depending upon the type of construction at the building you are having depending upon the type of the construction uh, uh, the building has been done you have uh, established a basic score and then corresponding to further details this basic score will undergo revisions or modification that is why it is called a score modifier. So, what you will do in this particular part the building is observed for specific parameters or specific characteristics accordingly the basic score will be modified. What are the specific details? So, based on the type of the building you found out it is moment resting uh, uh, frame is there and then it is corresponding to mid rise that means 4 to 7 stories are only present in the building. If it is wooden building there will not be any modifier, if it is frame building point to additional modification in the basic score will happen. If it is corresponding to light material again there will not be any modification in the basic score, if it is corresponding to frame resting frame then you will be having additional modifier corresponding to 0.4 and so on. So, it is like your building is there based on which you have found out the basic score. When you go for modification the first line itself will depending upon the type of building you can pick up a modifier appropriately if your building height is somewhere between 4 to 7 stories. If the building height is greater than 7 stories then you can go with the third row which is giving going to give you a score modifier with respect over uh, a basic score for building which are corresponding to greater than 7 story. If the building greater than 7 story it is corresponding to a framed structure you can go ahead with 0.6 increase in your basic score. If it is corresponding to INF corresponding you can find out the building type in the previous slide you will get 0.3 increase in your basic score. If you are going with uh, the last type of buildings you can go ahead with there is no further change in the uh, score. So, score will remain as basic score. Similarly, if there is irregularity in vertical dimensions you can go you can visit a building if you can get an idea about vertical irregularity just by looking at the elevation of the building correspondingly you can mark a modifier. So, depending upon the type of irregularity present you can find out the corresponding score modifier from this particular figure. Again there is irregularity in terms of plan which most of the time will not be visible in site uh, details unless specific details whether it is related to the plan of the building or some major irregularity in the plan which might be visible while going for screening around the building. Then again you can go ahead with a score modifier referring to this particular chart. Code detailing how much detailing given in the code has been followed while designing and constructing the building. So, corresponding to that you can again pick up score modifier. Now, there is a difference between the basic score and score modifier. Whenever we go for basic score that means primarily for a building more or less it will be a one type of building or you can say the building type cannot be more than one. So, corresponding to that building type you can assign the basic score. Now, whenever you are coming to the uh, score modifier then corresponding to each of these characteristics and the type of building you can pick up more than one set of score modifier. That means, if there are irregularity present in the building and you are talking about MRF minus 1.5 factor or score modifier will come alone from vertical irregularities corresponding to plan irregularity again minus 0.5 will come corresponding to uh, uh, MRF type of building. 
Similarly, if the building is corresponding to 4 to 7 stories, 0.4 plus 0.4 will be additional modifier in your basic score. So, it is not only one factor which will come into picture. With respect to these factors in the background, you will search for the details during field investigation, note down these details on the form which is given and then once you go for score assessment, you can keep referring to these parameters and this particular chart, keep modifying the basic score that will help in getting the final score which will be called as uh, overall score of a particular building or set of buildings for which one has to determine the vulnerability. So, score modifier continues here. According to IS 1893-2002, there are primarily three types of soil which are present. So, you can refer to uh, design response factor which are given IS 1893-2002 and uh, later on in 2016 also. So, hard rock is there. So, that means corresponding to the soil type or corresponding to the site condition on which the building is located or the foundation of the building is located, your response spectra will change. So, what are the three types? Hard soil, this is primarily defined as soil medium having strength or having in situ investigation based assessment that the SPT value or standard penetration test value is greater than 30 in the medium. That means, you are talking about the building, uh, the site condition, the site condition is such that the SPT value is greater than 30 that you are referring to as hard soil condition. Similarly, you can go ahead with medium soil condition. That means, again the building foundation is located on other site or any other site on which the building is located. So, if you do uh, borehole drilling, if you do standard penetration test at that particular site, your SPT value, standard penetration test value will be located, will be ranging in between 15 to less than 30. So, based on in situ investigation, you can find out what is the site condition on which your building and its foundation is going to rest or has rested. So, either you can go with the in situ investigation to narrow down to this particular detail or you can refer to earlier performed investigations before the laying of foundation for that particular building uh, had started. Primarily, whenever we go for any kind of uh, construction, we go for in situ investigation to find out whether the overcoming load from the superstructure the building, uh, the base of the building that is the foundation medium will be able to withstand or not. So, in order to understand the in situ strength characteristics, most of the time for important structure, there might have happened some kind of in situ investigation. It can be geophysical investigation, it can be geotechnical investigation which might have happened. Based on those investigation reports, you can find out how much was the SPTN value, how much was the standard penetration test value. If standard penetration test values are not there, you can refer to other details, maybe cone penetration uh, uh, test based results that is cone tip resistance as well as sleep friction. You can refer to uh, shear wave velocity profiling which are available for that particular site and correspondingly you can assess an understanding about the site. You can convert also the shear wave velocity to standard penetration test value based on regional correlation. So, again that will help in identifying what type of soil condition is available at my site of interest for which I have to take into account the site condition. If you recall, whenever we are going for building uh, uh, address, latitude, longitude, we have also uh, mentioned that the type of soil condition on which the building is located has also to be informed has also to be noted down. Again soft soil is there where the SPTN value is less than 15. So, if the SPTN value is less than 15, in such a condition field investigation is suggesting that your site is located on soft soil medium. So, basic score you have to define based on the type of the building and 
you can modify that basic score based on the score modifier referring to the previous slide. Also refer to the site condition at which the building is located. So, final score will be equals to basic score plus summation of number of score modifiers referring to the previous chart. The final score S is evaluated. So, basic score plus summation of all score modifier that is going to give you the S value. Once that S value is there, what you can do? You can refer to the damage potential or vulnerability of a particular building. That means, if your S value rapid visual screening based, I am only restricting here with respect to empirical method for vulnerability assessment that too you are going with rapid visual screening RVS score, which is empirical approach to find out vulnerability. It is cost effective, it is uh, quick also. So, here you can see you have got the basic score, you have modified that score based on score modifier and after modification the final score, if the final score value that is S value is less than 0.3, then there is high probability of grade 5 damage, particularly if you are referring to masonry building, if you are referring to uh, framed structures and it is very high probability of grade 4 damage if you are referring to masonry buildings. Similarly, if S value is ranging between 0.3 to 0.7, then again uh, very high probability that grade 3 damage can happen in uh, RC building and very high probability that grade 4 damage may happen in uh, masonry building. So, it is like again you can refer to the two types of uh, in general the construction has happened that means, masonry construction or concrete construction. So, there you are referring to here and then this is. So, you can say either it is high probability of grade 3 or very high probability of uh, uh, grade 2 kind of damages. So, this is kind of uh, understanding about the vulnerability based assessment. If the S values less than 2 greater than 0.7, you can say high probability that grade 3 damage may occur to the building because this is correlated with respect to the damage. If you are interested to find out what was the meaning of grade 2 damage, grade 3 damage, you can refer to lecture 28. Similarly, there are very high probability that grade 2 damage may occur to your building for which you have find out the RVS based S score if S value is greater than 3, that means there are probability of grade 1 damage. That means, lesser is the S score, there are very high probability that building may undergo damages of grade 5 to grade 4 for a particular uh, seismic zone. Now, we have taken the seismic zone into account, we have taken site condition into account, we have also taken irregularities into account, stories into account, shear bands into account, diaphragm into account. So, collectively based on that you have determined the score modifier and then determine the value of S uh, that is the final score and based on the final score you have determined the damage potential. Now, to exam this is the form which I was referring to. So, here we can find out the basic score depending upon the type of building. This form has been taken from Ministry of Home Affairs, Government of India website for seismic zone 4 and 5 referring to Sinha and Goel 2004. So, here you can see based on rapid visual screening, you, you just go there, find out the address, give the address of the uh, building, GPS coordinate that is latitude, longitude of the building, number of stories, how many buildings are there, uh, how many stories are there, when the building was uh, built who surveyed here, what is the date on which it was surveyed, total floor area, building name if it is there, if you are talking about some important building, then current visual condition of the building, it was excellent, good, damage or uh, other things are also given. Then you go to the building type, all these building type which we have discussed couple of slides back, everything is given over here. Then in terms of irregularity in terms of number of stories in terms of soil type. So, here it is given as soil type 1, 2 and 3. So, all these conditions are already there, you just take this particular form, go to a particular site, fill up all these details, your database corresponding to 
a particular building for which the building coordinates and the name of the building has been reported over here is now ready. So, if you are targeting for 100 buildings, collect the same information of all those 100 buildings, then sit in your laboratory, determine the S score corresponding to the S score. Now, you have a better understanding in terms of damage potential of a particular building. There is uh, one building randomly taken. So, you can see over this particular building, a screener went to the particular building to find out what is the detail you can extract from this particular building, information related to. So, uh, you can find out what is the seismic zone in which the building is located, then you can find out other details about the building. That means, the address of the building, latitude, longitude of the building, all these things you can you can enter, you can report it here. Then the building is moment resting frame structure that is MRF type of building we have established. Building type would be C 1 which is given again if you refer to the uh, building type chart. So, basic score was corresponding to 2.5. Then go with score modifier. What are the score modifier? The building rise or the number of stories 4 to 7. So, you go over here ground 1, 2, 3. So, total 4 are there including ground. So, you can pick up the score modifier here. It is mid rise building. So, 0 0.4 plus 0 0.4 will be the score modifier corresponding to the rise. Then in terms of vertical as well as irregularity at plan level, there are available. So, accordingly you can pick up corresponding to vertical and plan irregularity, what are the modifiers. It has been built with code detailing. So, again you can take score modifier that can be decided based on the design of the building and comparing with respect to the actual site condition. Soil type is soil type 2, which is again you can refer to different investigation done or maybe subsurface investigation at the site you can refer to and then uh, assign this is corresponding to soil type 2. So, corresponding to soil type 2 you can pick up score modifier. Now, this was your basic score of 2.5, this is corresponding to mid story or mid rise, this is corresponding to vertical irregularity, plan irregularity, codal provisions and then soil type or soil condition. Add all these things you are getting a value of 0 0.5. If you refer this to corresponding to the chart which was given one slide back. So, 0 0.5 means you are talking about somewhere over here that means your building is has high probability of grade 4 damage or very high probability of grade 3 damages that is the damage potential of the building just by looking around the building just by looking the specific details of the particular building we have come across. Similarly, we can we can uh, collect for another type of building. So, according to the final score that is S value the damage potential of the building is very high of grade 4, uh, uh, the high probability of grade 4 damage or very high probability of grade 3 damage. The screener can suggest a detailed investigation before uh, proceeding for risk assessment. Similarly, another example is there, there is another building where again the screener will go around the building get the details. So, here also following the same procedure which was there in the previous slide. The building is located in seismic zone 4, note down the address of the building, coordinates of the building. The building is uh, correspond is having burnt built infill wall structures that can be used the building type would be C 3. Basic score corresponding to C 3 is 2.6, you can refer to the specific slide where the basic score corresponding to each of the building type was given. and then score modifier are then updated accordingly corresponding to different different stories. So, if you, if you are going with here it is corresponding to there are no vertical irregularities because the building is very much in uh, leveled condition it is more or less you can see there are no irregularity whether it is in vertical uh, dimension or in plan. It is built with codal provision. So, corresponding to that the code modified the score modified of 0.2 will be taken into account. Soil type again it will be corresponding to soil type 2 that can be estimated based on. So, final score in this particular case will be corresponding to 2.2 that means 
the basic score other information which are not applicable you will have simply not applicable and then soil type and codal provision this is going to give you a basic score here corresponding to 11 uh, slide uh, this basic score corresponding to 2.2 okay so according to the final score the damage potential based on the s value is high potential of grade 2 or very high potential corresponding to grade 1 damage for this particular building which is appearing on the screen. The screener may or may not suggest a detailed investigation because the type of damage potential highlighted here is relatively low based on rapid visual screening. This was about uh, uh, empirical method and uh, we can start about analytical method. So, analytical method as I mentioned earlier, analytical method means you will be having numerical modeling of a particular structure. You will also try to find out based on uh, laboratory investigation or pushover analysis the demand capacity of a particular building and then subjecting the building to different sets of input motion characteristics. We can have an understanding about the damage characteristics of the building corresponding to different different ground motions. So, how you start with you firstly perform the seismic uh, performance assessment has to be done and then based on this you can go ahead with fragility curve development that is going to give you what is the uh, cumulative probability of damages at different level of ground motions. Taking that into account you can get an idea about the damage potential and correspondingly the vulnerability assessment can be performed for a particular building based on analytical method. So, if you are going primarily the structures are designed for gravity loads whenever you are going with earthquake loads additional components of forces has to be taken into consideration. So, if you take into account what is the variation between gravity load and earthquake load the first one is the direction of the loading in gravity load it is always vertical acting downward, but in earthquake the direction of loading primarily in horizontal direction changes within fraction of second. This is always stretching of members at a particular location when we are talking about gravity load, but in case of dynamic loading primarily the earthquake loading this location of members undergoing more deformation it keeps changing. Tension and compression in the member does not change in case of gravity load the shaking reverses that means, sometimes there is compression, sometimes it is tension in the medium or the material will come back from uh, compression and the compression will be generated to the other end or uh, diagonally opposite end of the building. So, then this can be considered as tension. The bending moment diagram is constant whenever you are talking about static loading condition. However, in case of dynamic loading condition that may vary. Analysis can be done. Uh, relatively easy when we are going with gra gravity load in comparison to if you are taking earthquake loading into uh, account. Further, if you are going with uh, primarily the understanding the, the demand capacity of the system, there are different methods. You can go with linear analysis where you can find out what are the linear forces, equivalent linear forces which will be applicable in terms of earthquake loading condition. If you are going with non-linear analysis, you can see once you start applying the load, what are the component which have almost yielded or reached to the state of failure, then there will be redistribution of loading characteristics and that is how you can progress with non-linear analy analysis. I will not be covering all these details, this is just to give you an overview about what are the different methods which can be used for static as well as dynamic condition to find out. The, the, the demand or the capacity of a building and what are the external loading conditions. So, based on these two comparison one can have an understanding about the damage potential. So, pushover analysis can be performed to find out uh, corresponding to different values of shear what is the tentative displacement which is going to be generated in a particular uh, medium. If you are going with dynamic analysis you can perform model response analysis or time history analysis procedure or response history analysis one can perform in order to find out 
the dynamic loading corresponding behavior of a particular structure. This is corresponding to linear if you are going with non-linear analysis you can again go with fast non-linear response analysis or model response analysis. So, I will stop here and then we will continue this part in the next lecture that is lecture 20. Thank you everyone. Thank you.